What is up guys, it's Alex Louie here with your Angular tutorial. Today I want to talk about Angular life cycle hooks and I'm going to spare you all the PowerPoint stuff. I'm going to give you a little bit of logic in the beginning but I'll spare you all the PowerPoint stuff and get right to the code as soon as I can. So let's go to the next slide. So just a little pre-knowledge that you should know when you uh, dabble in life cycle hooks. There are eight stages in a component lifecycle. So, so far what we've been building for the most part is we've been building components with their views and the TypeScript uh, model class. So these classes, when they load on your browser, there are eight things that happen. There's eight events that happen as, as they load and they happen all the time. We just haven't been catching them yet and now we're gonna start catching them. Every stage, that where this happens is called a life cycle hook event. It's called a hook because you can hook into it and when it happens it triggers a function that you can implement and you can perform whatever type of logic that you need to do before the DOM, after the DOM loads, when there's a bind, before a bind, etc. The constructor, uh, something that we've been using in, in previous lectures, will execute first, but that's not part of a lifecycle hook. That's just part of the JavaScript uh, language where, well, well, in JavaScript, we really don't have any type of class relationships. It's more of a prototypal, prototypal language. But with TypeScript and Angular, we do have the concept of a constructor when, it, when a class is instantiated. So in this case, you'd have a component that is instantiated when you do new you have a constructor function constructor function and, and that will in turn execute whatever is inside the constructor function but this is not considered a life cycle hook event the other point i want to enforce is that any dependency injection should be placed in the constructor you should not do any complex logic inside the constructor I am guilty of that in, in these lessons because I hadn't gotten to this concept of a life cycle hook event. One example that I did was I put in a an API call. Uh, I, I put in a service call on the constructor, which the service would go out and go to the API and return back an observable. That's a no-no. We should not do that. We should every, every time we want to do some type of preload of data, we should not put it in the constructor. We should put it in a life cycle event in this case we should use the ng on init lifecycle function okay so i think that's enough for just kind of the high level and let me let me just let's just go to the code here are all the lifecycle events we have available to us now i'm not going to go into each and every one but we will talk about them as we catch them so what i've done is i've built a component which actually catches all the events that are able for you to actually hook into. There's on changes, on init, to check, after content, uh, on destroy, and it's all the events are up to here. These are all the events that we can catch. The ones on the bottom that we're importing from Angular Core. Now these events again we have to import them from Angular Core. These are just interfaces that we need for Angular. Um, the component obviously is to create a component and then this one is called simple changes which I'll talk about which is related to one of these particular events. Now if we import these events from Angular Core we must also implement them on our class. So for example I've imported on changes then I must implement that interface in order for me to catch that hook and once I implement the actual hook, then I would have to build a function which the hook can, can trigger and we can catch and put in logic in here. Now, as I talked about before, the simple changes, the simple changes interface that we're catching is used for the on changes hook of lifecycle hook event. And what this does is it allows us to get, it provides you with an object that will give you the previous change and the change after it happened. Now, the order of this is simple. 
the on changes event will always trigger first if it is inside a parent. If it's not inside a parent, then you're going to have the on init trigger because there are no changes at the parent child level. So now if we go back to, sorry, let us go to our project. This is a demo project. So here it is. So we have the constructor which has instantiated. So I have that. I've caught that. So if we look at the constructor. This is what I'm writing. Don't pay mind to these injections. I'm just uh, testing, We're just testing some things. And then here are the events that are being triggered. So you have the ng on in it, uh, the do check. This is the content, the view. And then we have a do check in case some things change on the page. And you can catch that as well. Now, I remember I told you that one of the important ones is ng on in it. So ng on init is the one that loads initially as long as there haven't been any changes from the parent and uh, child model then the on init will say okay the component has initialized and now I am I am uh, I am changing I mean I'm initializing so here is where you would put any type of data data fetching on your app sorry here on this uh, ng on init so that is where you would probably make your service call. So I take a service call, uh, store it in some type of observable, and then I can use the async pipe to print that print that out. So that's one of the ones that you're going to use a lot, the ng on init. The other one may be on destroy. So this is when the actual component is destroyed. So this gets triggered when you either go to another route or you focus away from this component so maybe you go to another page so the on destroy will get will get triggered uh, when that happens now this the on destroy lifecycle hook event on the function is where you may want to unsubscribe from uh, any type of observables that you have subscriptions on when you loaded the data so you may want to unsubscribe from them on the on destroy you may want to set some things equal to null just basically the initialization the the initialization for your uh, component now for me to show you if you notice if you notice one thing go back you've noticed that there's one event missing that hasn't triggered can you tell me which one that is yeah so if you guessed the on changes event that's right so that a particular event did not get triggered. Why? Because that only gets triggered when you have a parent child uh, within a, a component. So let me show you what, what I mean by that. It's easier to show you the actual event. So here I've created, so lifecycle X is my parent, parent uh, component. And then here is my, you, you guys remember my, my input, right? I created, we created that a long time ago where you can have a embedded component within a parent and this my input component is a we can say that it's a child of lifecycle x now when this gets rendered when this gets rendered we're actually passing it a a binded va a interpolated value a property we're doing property binding here cuz this is a property in our lifecycle event so we have a parent value here we call it mr meeting so if I save all this, this is actually just going to render uh, this particular, you know, this is my input, my input, my input, my input. So right now, let me clear this again. The parents events will load. And if you notice, okay, if you notice the after content checked event triggered, and then the ng on changes. Now this ng on changes is not the one from the parent. It's actually the one from the child. So if we go back to our component called my input, I have that particular uh, event caught. So I have I have the on init, right? And then I also have the on changes. So if you notice over here, well, we do have the on G ng on changes event triggered first for the child right 
And then we have the on init triggered for the child. So you see that ng on init initialized. And if we go back here, we have the ng on changes and then ng on init initialized. This is all happening in the child. This is all happening in the child. And remember what I told you ng on changes will trigger if it is some type of child component of a parent where the value is changing. So if I'm passing down a value such as I am doing here because I am passing down the property binded value called parent value and I'm changing that and then when I go to um, the child component the child component is gonna grab that property binded value right and it's going to tell me what the previous value was and then well what I wrote when I caught the when I caught the life cycle event the previous value and it's going to give me the value that's currently there so the previous value if we go back was null right because my my child component is going to initially just not have anything it's just going to be null for the property but then I initialize it to current which is Mr. Meeting so I pass that Mr. Meeting I go back to my code Mr. Meeting comes from the parent so what I've done is I've triggered a change on the my input component which means that as I told you earlier ng on changes always will trigger first as long as there is a change that's bubbling up or bubbling down to the child so in this particular case I sent in a value for a property at the parent level here which is parent value so this comes in it comes in here I've changed it at the parent level to Mr. Meeting okay so if we look at our component uh, this is what I have I have Mr. Meeting here I have passed that in right now the compo the child component itself it says oh something's changed so that's the first thing that's gonna trigger that's the first event the first life cycle event that's gonna trigger and that's gonna get caught after it triggers all those changes that are coming in and bubbling in then it will say okay now I'm going to initialize my component I'm gonna initialize myself I'm still the child I'm gonna initialize myself and then all the other events will trigger as 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 they should as they should um, and then the child events again will will trigger I've only caught two I've only caught two. I've caught the ng, ng on init and ng on changes. And ng on changes, remember I told you, we have an array, uh, I'm sorry, an object that, that gives us um, an array of previous and current values for our particular properties. In this particular case, here uh, I was able to get the, the changes that have occurred in my property values. And if we look over here and I'm looping through it um, I had the previous value was undefined and then it's current for Mr. Meeting and then the previous value for student author was undefined and then now it's current student author okay it's student author and then we go to ng on init um, and then the ng on changes data change to, uh, it's called Brad so this is for the next particular uh, input and then this is for the next particular input for Caleb and then John Doe. So each one obviously is going to have their own life cycle of it. So you got to remember that if you render one particular component as a child, each one is going to have their life cycle events and you can catch them uh, as you will. So it's important to realize that. Okay. So remember in the parent, because nobody's changing any input values uh, in my parent, component then on ng on changes will never trigger this will never trigger unless I um, this is this guy is a is a child of another parent and they're giving me a value which makes a change in my particular component through an input um, attribute unless that happens uh, we're not well, this isn't going to get triggered but remember the ng on changes always triggers it always triggers it always triggers um, as a component uh, it just de depends on if it does then there has been a change because you are a child of a parent with an input attribute with an input attribute okay 
So I may make more videos on, so we've covered uh, on Geon changes on Geon init. So do check, I can talk about that a bit before I close out this video. Do check, um, that's an event that triggers every time there could be a potential change to any property or, or, or data in your component. So for example, if I do a click, okay, let's say I, I click uh, add number, okay, do check will get triggered because that tells the lifecycle of it, it says, okay, this particular event could potentially change a value, but it doesn't mean it, it has. And if there's a potential change, such as a click, right, because a click could bring on a change, then that lifecycle event will get triggered and you can catch that okay which is which is good i think it's good because sometimes somebody may catch may click something may not change a property it may not change anything on the dom but you still want to be aware that it has it has changed okay and and if there is a change then you can probably catch it and do some type of logic on the front end so that's what do check do check is for okay so I hope you enjoyed this video. Alex Louie, subscribe to my channel. I will see if I can put up more videos on the contents uh, events, lifecycle events. But I think these four are the ones that the on changes on init, do check, and on destroy are the ones that you mostly are going to use, in my opinion. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, always look forward to your comments. Let me know why you would use after content on init. Um, I know why. Uh, I just haven't had a, a reason to do it in, in an app. But um, if you want to tell me what your reasoning was, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking for uh, for ways to uh, to improve. Again, Alex Louie, parttimeadjunct.com. Subscribe to my channel. Always free, no ads. I promise you that. Take care.